Hey everyone, it is Kai from WCC, and today we're going to talk about a topic that is kind of weird in this kind of climate since we have no tournaments, but that is how not to die to judges and, uh, you know, judge calls. So, I know judges are very intimidating, especially at BCS, where you pay money to fly to these tournaments, or at least take time to travel and practice these tournaments, and the last thing you want to happen is to lose because you screwed up, and honestly, everyone screws up. Eventually, you will screw up at a tournament, um, and it will be the difference, hopefully these tips, right, will be the difference between you getting a game loss and you only getting a warning. Just a tip though, guys, this is not a definitive way to get out of getting screwed by a game loss. If you do make a mistake, you are at the mercy of judges, and judges can rule differently. Uh, they can technically choose a different way of punishment that is not part of the florals because head judges and all that have the final decision of what goes on the day so best thing is don't make mistakes then you are not at the mercy of your opponent or judge handling this situation but again this is just ways for you to get punished maybe less or get play more defensive in your plays so you have less chances of getting screwed so let's jump to the other camera and we can talk about some tips for you to not die to judges. So let's talk about Bushiro judging first, because this will play into how you should be acting. Bushiro judging, when it comes to game states, more, leans more to leniency. They, they would rather try to reverse the situation as much as possible before giving you a game loss. And the only thing they're not leaning on is things like cheating, uh, being rude, unsportsmanlike conduct, and time. Right, if you reach 25 minutes, you're both done. But let's talk about the leniency bit. You should be creating, you should be playing cards in a way, it's kind of like defensive driving. You should be defensive playing, right? You should be doing things so that you can create states of leniency. What is the most, like, just think about it. What is the most common way to probably get killed by a judge? Uh, the, the most common way is probably just drawing an extra card. Adding a card to your hand that both players do not know. So let's say you have like, this is your hand, right? This is your, your nice five card hand, yep. So, what are some ways to add cards in? So if you tutor a card, for example, let's say I tutor a grade two, I tutor a Starlight Violinist, I add this to my hand. Oh, 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 card flying. Yeah, I add this card to my hand, um, and then I continue playing the game, and then we realize, dude, you're not supposed to add a Starlight Violinist to your hand, you did the effect wrong. Since we both know that a Starlight Violinist was added to our hand, oh, at least my opponent should know, because it's via an effect, right? You search this card or you showed your opponent the card, then we both know, okay, I gotta take the Starlight Violinist out of my hand, put it back into my deck. What is up with these cards, man? Put it back in my deck, do, do a shuffle, right? Do a better shuffle than me, I'm just doing it for quickly. And then we can proceed with our game, the judge will likely give me a warning, because I did something incorrectly, but I won't be getting a game loss, right? So what is a state where I will get a game loss? So let's say I have a card that draws me a card. I draw the card, I continue playing the game, and then my opponent's like, hey dude, you're not supposed to draw a card. That, that effect you did is wrong. I go, okay, that's bad. I'll just put back the card that I drew, and we can continue the game. But I can't, because I might know, I, I might know I drew like this card, right? I drew a Liberot. But my opponent doesn't know I drew a Liberot. So it's just my word against his, and that kind of situation, no one can know. Because the judge can't come and say, you know, just randomly put a card back into your deck and the problem is solved. Because you could actually put back a card that is good. You put back this crit trigger and then like that, right? That's that's not a safe way to play. So situations like that where you're adding a card to your hand and your opponent doesn't know what card it is, that will give you a game loss. And it doesn't really require you playing like OTT, right? Or a, or a clan that draws a lot. Even just normal playing will, can get you into that state. So let's say I'm I'm starting the turn. I go, okay, draw for turn. And then my opponent's like, oh, dude, what does this card do? Can I read it? I'm like, sure. It's like, oh, does this, you know, it, it on rides draw a card? And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's what it does. So we get sidetracked. We're talking about something else. We talk about the weather. We talk about hot enemy girls, right? And then after that, that quick discussion, I just draw a card because uh, I forgot that I actually drew. And continue my turn. I shuffle. I play play my hand and stuff like that. He goes, hey dude, don't you have an extra card in your hand? You're like, oh no, I do. But now I've already gone through that phase, I can't really reverse that. So let's think of ways we can actually 
reverse these, well, play it safe, right? Play it safe. So again, let's, we, we, have, we have, we have a hand. Whenever I play, whenever I play in a tournament, I always make sure that my opponent knows what I'm doing. So you declare everything you do, especially at the end, of, in the beginning of turn. So if your opponent, like, finishes turn and just nods to you, he goes, mm -hmm, grunts, right? He does a grunt. You confirm with him that it's the end of the turn. It's like, you know, is it my turn? It's like, my turn, draw. And he's like, he grunts again. Then, okay, that's, that's confirmation. So I draw. Now, I, I normally wouldn't immediately just put the card to my hand. I would just put it to the side. So we know that immediately, okay, this is the card I drew. And this is the rest of my hand. And normally I just put the card like here. I, I don't actually need to add it to my hand. Because, you know, I know what it is. So I can continue. I can do some plays. Um, and then maybe he goes, dude. You, sh you drew an extra card or something, right? Like maybe this turn, like maybe I have a card draw. I draw again, put it here. So okay, cool, cool. This is my hand. And then yeah, he goes. You drew an extra card. I was like, oh, this is the card that I drew for this turn. Uh, we both clearly saw. And then the judge will probably come and goes. Is this the card he drew? And your opponent should say yes. If he don't, if he hasn't, if he says he hasn't paid any attention to what you're doing, uh, that actually looks bad on his part. But you have, you are basically playing defensively. This is like defensive playing, similar to defensive driving. You're actively playing a way to negate any mistakes. Because trust me, in every, like in a tournament or tournament situations, you will eventually make mistakes, but you just want to minimize those mistakes so you don't get the game lost. Right? So here, I know which cards I've drawn during my turn. And look, if I need to put them back, okay, this is actually the card I drew. Um, okay, we can both identify that this is the card that you drew and put it back shuffle it and then we can proceed on with our game So these are just this is just a very simple way to make sure you don't get killed by a judge now Make sure right important thing every time you do an effect that requires you to draw so you have in the main searches for like a Black wing sword breaker, right? When you use the effect to draw, make sure you tell your opponent you are drawing. You want to have both players kind of consent, right? Consent that you are drawing cards. This is just like another way to declare what you're doing, another way to minimize what you're doing. And if people are watching, they will they will know that you've been doing it correct and that if your opponent hasn't been paying attention, well, that's his problem. But again, once you do the draws, put them to the side, right? Make it simple. If you have, if you have like, if you're playing against like deleters, right? and you have like a bind zone at the back, a face down bind zone, then you might need to do it differently. Move the bind zone under your drop zone, right? So this is, this is let's say this is your drop zone. Move it under your drop zone. You're, you're never gonna be looking at your bind zone that much and you can still continue looking at these cards and then continuing with your turn. So another way that you can lose the game very easily is sticky cards. And that's how you draw an extra card in your opening hand. So let's say like draw five cards Oh, six. So here's five. And let's say one of my cards is sticky. So I'm like, I'm looking at them and these cards are stuck together because like water, sweat, you know, you had a sweaty game. So here we go. Uh, it looks like five cards. I'm just going to put like, hand looks good. Hand looks good. I'm um, going to put this card back, draw a card and do my mulligan. Bam. Continue with the game. And then suddenly I realized, oh dude, I have seven cards. So if this is at the beginning of the game, immediately just call a judge. Because this is actually a reversible game state. Likely, they will just you just randomly put back a card. The game hasn't really progressed, um, and that can kind of be reversed. You, you're probably at a disadvantage because you mulligan based on not knowing your seventh card. Um, but if you keep on playing, if you keep on playing, that is definitely a game loss because you will be progressing the game state, uh, and you might be cheating because you're trying to hide that you drew an extra card. So if you get a cheat, if they call you a cheater, then, you, then that's a DQ. So in this kind of situation, always try and get the judge uh, involved as soon as possible. And look, if you did progress with the game and you realize you have an extra card, then you're done. That's too bad. Get unsticky cards. One way to, to, uh, to stop this from happening is at the beating, when you draw your five cards, spread them, right? Spread them. Again, show your opponent. These are five cards. Move them around, right? like feel them does it feel like this card is like stuck with two cards if it does oh easy you can quickly replace that done right so beginning spread your cards put them out five cards you can pick them up then do your mulligan okay i'm gonna put two away put the two to the bottom of the deck put back the three right put the rest of your hand down put the two down again do your little feel make sure they're not stuck and we got five man we're ready to go 
The other thing, and the la I think the last one, last one just on adding extra cards to hand, is... Well, this really isn't an extra card. Is Oh no, you GSS the last turn, you put these cards away. You proceeded the game with like 47 cards. Uh, yeah, that's an auto loss, dude. Don't do that. If you GSS, make sure you know where you put your GSS cards. Don't put them in your G zone or your force marker zone. You're bound to make a mistake sometime. Don't separate them. Yeah, yeah. This is all just about knowing how to open your cards. So that is just a very easy and quick lesson on how to not die. Oh, another way, drive checks. I know it's fun to like, uh, I know it's fun to just just quickly drive check. I, these are the quickest, like these are the, the, the silliest drive checks you can do, right? Let's say, uh, let, let's ride something better. Uh, do, I have a, do I have a grade three? Yeah, we've got a grade three, but. I'm gonna do a twin drive, right? Don't do this. One. Oh, there's, I, I did too quick. I did, I, no, I did too slow, okay? So some people do like this. Quick. Burr, burr. <laughs> Don't do that. One, uh, you add it to your hand. If you actually did a triple drive check, right? Oh, sick, you just lost the game. Because now your opponent probably doesn't know uh, what you did. Do your drive check slower. Right? Do your drive check slower. Let your opponent know what you're doing. So, drive check. First check, right? Yep. Both players can see. Your opponent can't complain that you're adding your card too quickly to your hand. He goes, okay, this is an Akane. We both know it's an Akane. Cool. I will add it to my hand. Yeah? If your opponent is like, later on saying, what did you drive check? And you say, no, dude. I don't have to tell you because I've already drive checked previously and I've shown you the card. It's not like, hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> and then your opponent's like, I, I didn't see it. Can you, can you do it again? The judge will probably side of him if you jump drive check too quickly. But again, so first drive check, at to hand. Second drive check, it's crit. Cool. Declare your effects. I'm going to put it all to Vanguard. I'm going to put it all to Rearguard. Add it to your hand. You can. Some people even leave it on the field, right? Just to let their opponent know. Not hiding information. So it's really up to you. But do your drive checks slower. Faster is not a good thing because it creates confusion. It makes it look like you're a dick. And uh, this is also covering yourself. First check, bam, nothing. Second check, bam, critical trigger. Declare effects, done. So very simple ways. Right now, there is not much going on. So you can even practice how to do this. I remember at Worlds, uh, when I was training for Worlds once, I did have some bad habits. I basically just took a while and changed my bad habits, played differently, and to get the bad habits out of my system. So. Something like this, you know, drawing defensive defensive playing just so you don't get killed by judges is a very good skill to have because eventually even the best players do make mistakes in tournaments and you don't want to turn that mistake into a game loss. At worst, you want it to be a warning so you can continue playing the tournament and feel happy. So that's it for this lesson in not dying to a judge and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!